What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here and in this video we're continuing talking about transformations of functions and more specifically the transformations we'll deal with is a horizontal stretch or compression and a reflection in the y-axis. And the reason why I grouped them together is because they're going to deal with the same transformation value. And I'm going to do the exact same format that I did in the previous video when we talked about vertical stretch and compressions and reflections in the x-axis. Remember that dealt with the a value. When we're talking about these transformations, we're actually going to be talking about the k value. So remember we're taking a parent function, transforming it, and these transformations listed out here depend on the k value. And an example of how a k value is used with some of the parent functions, let's say that we have the square root of x, well the k value would be like right there, right? While the a value, which is what we went over in the previous video, would be outside of the square root, I mentioned that. Or let's say that we have the absolute value of x. The k value, or sorry, not the square root, the k value would be attached to the x like that inside the absolute value while that a value would be on the outside. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, go over a bunch of different cases that uh, k can be. We're gonna give a description depending on that value and then I'm gonna show you through an example how it looks graphically. So the first case is if k is greater than positive one. Okay, and if k is greater than positive one, what we say is that the function is horizontally, um, sorry, horizontally compressed by one over k, by a factor of one over k. So here's where this is a little bit more weird compared to the a values because you actually, when you're describing it, you have to take the reciprocal of that value, right? So it's gonna be horizontally compressed by one over k. Remember when a was greater than one, it was vertically stretched by a. But if k is greater than one, it's horizontally compressed by one over k, All right? So just be aware of the difference. And an example of that is, let's say that we would have the square root of 3x. So notice that the k value is 3. So we would say that this function, if it goes to here, it is horizontally compressed by a factor of 1 over 3. Notice how the k value is 3. So when we describe the... Um, the compression, the horizontal compression, we flip that three and say it's one over three. Okay, and the way that this looks compared to the square root of x, remember the square root of x, it looks like this. Well, what we would do is we would take this and horizontally compress it. And so the way it would end up looking is like that. So this would be an example of the square root of 3x. Okay, so we're taking one more time this function, the square root of x, and horizontally compressing it by a factor of 1 over 3, and so it ends up looking like that. Okay, so that is the, uh, the first case. Now, if k is equal to 1, then like the a value, when the a value is equal to 1, there's not going to be any transformation because we would still have just the square root of x, right? There would be like a one over here. So it does not change. So if k is one, there is no transformation. Now, what if k is between zero and one? What's gonna happen then? Well, then we would say there is a horizontal stretch by a factor, by the reciprocal again, by one over k. Okay, so an example of this is if we have um, 
y is equal to the square root of 1 over 3x. Okay, if you get something like that, if we take square root of x and we transform it to 1 over 3x, what we would say is that this, notice how the k value is 1 over 3. So notice 1 over 3 is between 0 and 1, so it's in this case. So we would say there's a horizontal stretch by the reciprocal of this, so we would say by 3. Okay, and you got to also look out for other fractions, like uh, let's say this was 2 over 3. Notice 2 over 3 is between um, 0 and 1, so the k value would be 2 over 3. So we would say that there's a horizontal stretch by 3 over 2, which is the reciprocal of 2 over 3. So it would be like 1 over 2 over 3, which ends up being 3 over 2. All right, so just remember the k value, whatever it is, you're flipping it when you are describing the, uh, the transformation. Okay, and the way that this is going to look graphically, if we graph the square root of x here, well, the square root of 1 over 3x is going to look like this. Okay, it's horizontally stretched by a factor of 3. So if we take this and we horizontally stretch it, we would end up getting this over here. All right, so that's how the square root of 1 over 3x looks like compared to the square root of x. All right, now what if k is equal to 0? Well, if k is equal to 0, then there's no function. you'll end up just having y is equal to 0, right? Because we'll have the square root of kx. k is 0, this whole thing is going to be 0, right? So you most likely won't run into a scenario like that. The next case is if k is between negative 1 and 0. So notice in this case, k is going to be negative for sure. And whenever k is negative, then there's a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, so a reflection in the y-axis is for sure going to happen if the k-value is negative. And in this specific case, if it's between 0 and negative 1, then we would say there is a horizontal stretch by the absolute value of 1 over k. We would just say the positive like we did with the a. So for example, if we had um, y equals the square root of negative 1 over 3x. So let's do this here. We're taking square root of x, we're transforming it to the square root of negative 1 over 3x. Well, if we describe these transformations, we would say there's a reflection in the y-axis. And then we would say there's a horizontal stretch by 3, by the reciprocal of the absolute value. The absolute value of negative 1 over 3 is 1 over 3. And then the reciprocal of it is just 3. Right? So whatever that k value is, remember, you're always just flipping it when you are describing the transformation. And the way that this is going to look compared to the square root of x, so this is the square root of x. We mentioned that this is the square root of 1 over 3x. So then, if there's a negative here, we reflect it in the y-axis. So this would end up looking like this. So this would be the square root of negative 1 over 3x. Right, so it's horizontally stretched by 3 and then reflected in the y-axis. Right? The next case is if k is equal to negative 1. Now, if k is equal to negative 1, there's no horizontal stretch or compression. There's just a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, So an example of that is uh, if we had y equals the square root of negative x. It's just like a negative 1 there. So there's no horizontal stretch or compression if we took the square root of x square root of negative x would just be reflection, a reflection in the, uh, the y-axis. 
And then finally, if k is less than negative 1, the last case, there's going to be a reflection in the y-axis, and there's also going to be a horizontal compression by the absolute value of 1 over k, the reciprocal again. So an example of that would be like the square root of negative 3x. So the way that looks, we got square root of x. Remember, square root of 3x, horizontal compression. So it's going to be compressed. That's going to be root 3x. So negative root 3x would just be this reflected. So the way we would describe these transformations, if the k value is negative 3, there's a reflection in the y-axis, and then there's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 3, positive 1 over 3. And those are the different uh, cases for k. right? So kind of similar to the a value, it's just the stretch and compression is uh, interchanged. And then also remember when you're describing the factor, you're always taking the reciprocal of k.